welcome to another edition of What's the Story? My name is Joe Painter. Thanks for joining us here on The People Chronicles. Very special guest this afternoon, and I'm fortunate to have met you. This is Dr. Ahmad Shazad, and you and I met at Ramadan. Yes. And we shared a meal together. Absolutely. That was my first experience with a Ramadan meal, first the prayers and then the meal, sure. and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. And um, you, we just got to talking, and at the time I was doing, and you may remember it, the untold stories of Brooks County artists, and I found out you're an artist. Yes. Truly one <laughs> of many things that you are. But this, you, uh, it's not a painting, it's a drawing, correct? It's a drawing, yes. Is it a drawing of a cat yes. that you photographed, that you've met? Yes, I met this cat um, at a zoo. This is an American bobcat. And I had some, some rough sketching, you know, on a piece of a napkin, you know, that I could do. I, I wanted to keep the feeling in the eye as a memory so that I can reproduce it. So, you know, exactly after one year, uh, you know, I, I found that napkin and said, oh. <laughs> really? A year later? Yes. So, but, but I remembered the feeling. It was the most beautiful feeling. And um, I decided to just draw it. And, you know, just two, three days ago, you know, I just finished it. So Two or three days ago, you yes, finished? Yes. Yeah. He's looking at me. Yes. That's how I feel. This isn't, I'm not looking at a picture of a bobcat. A co bobcat? Yes, a bobcat. I feel like he's looking right at me. Yeah, so I think that's what, you know, I always have tried to achieve through my art. Um, so I have taken some pictures that, you know, you can, you saw those pictures of snow leopard. Well, let's talk about that a minute. So yes. first of all, your art is wildlife. Yes, wildlife. Or nature. Nature. Because I saw some beautiful flowers in there. Yes. And so there is a, a, a bit of a video, and I believe we're going to introduce some clips here. And it's called, the, the glass is always illuminating? Yes, every glance is illuminating. Every glance is illuminating. So basically, in the mystic tradition of Islam, um, the, there is this concept of sacred glance. So the sacred glance is that when you, uh, in a very non-judgmental state in which you are totally present in your body and in your consciousness, look inside the eye of another person or soul or an animal or any living creature, you meet together at a space which is very sacred. So you meet in the realm of the spirit, or what mm. we can call as the presence of God, you know, which, is, which has no shape or form, which is imminent, which is transcendent. And you connect, you both are consciousness created by God. And uh, you, know, you meet that cat or that bird at a level and say, hey, who are you? So we are basically communicating at a you know primordial state. You know, made at the uh, when we were all together as a mm -hmm. form of one protoplasm. So it's the creation of one creator, and recognizing that you know, recognizing our master, our creator, uh, you know, our or originator, together at a one spot and say, hey, you and I have a common. We are both creation of one artist, one great artist, one so absolute So it's like seeing the divine in you. Yes. And you're seeing the divine in me. Exactly. I hadn't really thought about that in wildlife. Oh, it's amazing because and the thing is the animals don't have egoic structures that we have. Like we have past, we have grievances about our experiences, we have grievances about people, we have a lot of anxiety and certainty about future. Animals live in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't have memory. Well, they, well, there is memory of you know how to avoid or where is food or where is water hole. But then there is this memory of you know interactions. They don't say, okay, such and such bobcat looked at me in a bad way. Such and such bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> Only we do that. You know what? That's interesting. You talk yeah. about living in the moment, and we're often say just live in the moment because yes. that's what's real. That's what's now. Yes. And as human beings, we almost have to. Um, fight ourselves or train our brain yes. to live in the moment. You're saying wildlife does it naturally. Oh, n naturally. I can tell you, I had a cat that I rescued from San Francisco. I was living in Vermont at that time, and she was close to euthanization twice. Mm. Um, so uh, she was a Turkish Angora, and um, you know we have this tradition. It's a national treasure in Turkey. Uh, the tradition is that Prophet Muhammad had a cat named Moiza, who was a Turkish Angora, odd-eyed, and one day she was 
sleeping on his shirt that he had to wear and go out and lead the you know faithful in the prayer so he didn't disturb the cat the cat was sleeping early in the morning he just took a scissor and cut that piece of his shirt where the cat was sleeping and wore that and people said what happened he said that you know uh, this was just a uh, recognizing of these sentient beings so that cat taught me so many things I was more focused on you know why she's hiding under the bed all the time why she's not interacting with me so when I would stand in on my prayer rug and when I would pray she would come and sit very close to me mm. it was amazing that I was not focused on her her so she thought that you know I'm occupied with that higher force you understand what I mean she she, she found that you know very neutral state of my mind mm -hmm. so she was close to me and she taught me so many things so as soon as I would focus on her or trying to get her or try to pet her she would run away or even if there's a thought she taught me non-attachment she taught me that everything is impermanent she saw you to, to just be be and then not only that but you know that there is higher um, degree of consciousness too as soon just like Buddha said that you can touch the tiger how if you are if you have no thought and you at this state of no thought uh, well I don't advise you to touch the tiger but 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 but, but the don't you, try this at all <laughs> but, but you and the tiger are in one realm of spirit as soon as a thought comes a tiger is going to rip you apart so I you know I mean it's it could be a sacred fable or something like that you know uh, but I believe that, you know, as soon as a thought of anger or any thought of, um, you know, ego coming to my mind, my cat would just simply depart. She would not sit close to me. It was just amazing so feeling. The, the cat taught you to be aware, aware of all of those emotions or yeah. your, own, your own presence of mind, your own thoughts. And, and, and not only that, that she, she would reward me if I'm very present. She would come and sit in my lap. Aww. As soon as you know I have thoughts you know mm -hmm. because I was going through a phase in my life and you know there was you know some um, you know memories that I was dealing with so she would just simply get off and depart it's as if she was saying forget about that huh. L you know live now life is now well you know the um, exhibit and as you're seeing some of these in each of those pictures now those are photographs so you're yes. a photographer yes and an artist. And an artist. Yes, too. Um, but in each of those pictures, there is a meeting. I don't feel like I'm just looking at a picture. I feel like the picture's looking at me. Oh. How many hours? I mean, it, it's, you must have taken a long time exactly. to capture that meeting with this wildlife. Sure. So some of these um, snow leopards that you see, there's a beautiful um, snow leopard looking right in the camera. So I actually met with this cat six times, mm. um, 45 minutes to an hour each time I used to go to Stoneham sit very silently you know outside her enclosure she was there for a captive breeding and you know show as well um, in the zoo so a part of the wildlife conservation society so I would just sit there and say hey I know who you are I know you're a beautiful leopard from the Himalayas I'm from Himalayas too and I know that it's very tough for you to be here, but you're so beautiful. I recognize you, your challenge, what you're feeling with, and your absolute beauty. And I would just say all of these things, just sitting there, trying to make an imaginary connection or a bridge with the cat. You're saying it literally or in your mind? In my mind, okay. trying to communicate to her through this imaginary bridge of love and sending her a lot of positive energy and love and healing. And I have experienced some of the most amazing responses from mm. the birds, from the animal. So there's this moment that the cat turns around and looks right into your soul and say, really, you know who I, who I am. Or, you know, I cannot say this is a realm of spirit. The words fade. Mm -hmm. You know, you are speechless. Mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is one moment in which another, another species, another spirit looks inside your spirit. And you are out of words. And if your camera is ready, you capture some of the most powerful glance. And now I know what that sacred glance is. You actually look inside the other person and recognize yourself or your element. Hmm. which is created by God with your common ground. You know, we hear a lot that um, we see in others what we are, what we're dealing with. Yes. We project ourselves onto yeah, exactly. others, so sure. it's that same concept. You're using the word healing. 
You yes. know, I mean, you offered the cat this healing, this understanding, and that transfers right to another profession. I don't know which is the main or the <laughs> secondary profession. There are so many, um, but you are a doctor. Yes, I'm a physician. Yes. So how does this experience with your art and with spending time with wildlife to capture and connect, how does that transfer to your experience and your practice with patients? Oh, ab I absolutely love, um, I will tell you, you know, how I got into medicine. That was one conversation with my mom, you know, one afternoon. But I think that, you know, I was, um, uh, I was very lucky. I was awarded the Healing Art of Medicine Award. But I, Where were you and when was this happening? Yeah, so this was my training in the Brooklyn Hospital Center, which was part okay. of the New York Presbyterian um, at that time when I was trained in 2011. So on my graduation, I got this award. But I think that, you know, healing, th this is very dear to my uh, heart, you know, this concept of addressing somebody in a holistic way, the entire person and being compassionate and trying to put yourself in his or her shoes and see where the pain is coming from and embracing and validating yes i know that you're dealing with drug addiction or alcohol addiction but that's not entirely who you are you're much deeper than that so i accept you i understand your pain i understand your suffering let's snap out of that and let's try to work together hmm. to you know towards healing so you're connecting at a very basic level with your patients as well. However, yes. medicine in America, yes. it's, it's more rushed than that. Um, it's, I, I'm guessing, difficult. I know in my own experiences with, with doctors, you, you know, you're on a schedule every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes, whatever it is, there's another appointment. How are you able to do that within the confines of medicine as it is? But I can tell you, this is an art. What, what can you do in those 15 minutes? Yeah. But I can tell you one thing. Patients are your best judges. Somebody who is thirsty knows where the water is. Ah. So if you are present, I start every patient encounter with, hello, what's going on? You know, even with the knock, I'm very present. Patients sense my sincerity. Patients can tell by looking in your eyes, in your body language, whether you know your craft whether you know medicine, whether mm -hmm. you know what's going on with them. And I think honesty, uh, there are patients that I only spend five minutes sometimes, they're fine with it. They know me, who I am, and they, they, they trust me. If you know your field, if you're completely sincere, basically the health comes from the divine. I am a believer. I have been into patient encounters in which I have misdiagnosed stuff which was totally unrelated and which was very scary. You know, and some of them were tumors. And, you know, it's almost like God is asking me, palpate her spleen. Uh, so, you know, then there's no I, then I'm just a channel. Mm -hmm. I think it's, if you have this sincerity, the universe shifts in your favor and helps you, gives you a milestone to look at, gives you a hint to look, to look at. I think uh, that I am not a healer. I'm just a channel. The ultimate healer is God. And if I have this sincerity, this attitude, he helps me. Trust me, in those 15 minutes, the people, as I said, the thirsty person knows whether you gave them the water or not. Your being, your energy, your presence, and these people are scared. These are vulnerable. These are angry people because, you know, illness is not uh, a pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. So they know if you are respectful, if you like them or not, if you appreciate or whether you are enjoying your work or not. So I'm amazing. hearing in, in your medical practice, you put yourself out of the way as, as well. Your ego is over here. Oh, absolutely you not are at all. A yeah. So it's not me or I, there's, there's no me. The day I say it's, you know, my, no. God gave me these talents for a reason. I did not ask him to make me an artist. If I can draw this, what is the purpose? It could not be just that I make a picture and people say, wow. Uh, and, uh, and my ego is filled up. No, this is a very small uh, or petty pursuit. I think whatever I draw or make, if I sell it, 100% proceeds go to charity. I'm connecting people. I'm giving them an al al alternative. Instead of focusing on what she said to me, what he said to me, he dumped me, she dumped me, he left me <laughs> alone, he, she left me alone. Let's snap out of that. Or he has more money or she has more money. Let's see, there's so much beauty in the nature. There's the song of the hermit thrush. Look how beautiful the eyes are. 
So we have to, you know, these are neutral ways which are ac accessible to us. We don't have to spend $500 to, this is not a Gucci bag, this is not a Prada jacket. Thank goodness. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, so I'm trying to get, and you would be surprised, my first exhibition was in my hospital. And the people, very you know, common people, some of them were street vendors, some of them were farmers, uh, you know, they gave me a better critique of my work than some of the people who you know had arts degrees or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. because that was very original this some of the people say that they were tears because the intensity of the um these are very simple portraits you've been able to capture your yeah. experience with the wildlife how did you i'm really curious about this yes how did you pick your path because this is a God-given talent. Yes. Medicine and your ability to connect with your patients is another God-given talent. And I understand there's more. There's photography <laughs> and there's, there's <laughs> theater and there's singing. And yes. So how did you select your path? Well, you know, um, I was a very good student and um, a time came when I, you know, um, got you know, very good marks and got, got selected on an open merit for King Edward Medical University, which is one of the most prestigious institutions in Lahore, Pakistan. It's established in 1854. Uh, my dad wanted me to be an artist. Mm -hmm. and I think he wanted to be artist himself. So Projecting ourselves on yes, others. <laughs> uh, yeah, he said, no, he, he's a, he, he believes in very simple life. And he said mm -hmm. that, you know, simplify everything. This is your passion, go forward with it. You know, the material wealth means nothing. It's your, you know, emotional, your intellectual, your spiritual health which matters. Mm -hmm. My mother felt the same way, but she and I had a walk in, in our backyard, you know, in the afternoon when she said, look, I don't want you to make commercial art. I don't want you to combine your passion with your economy because then you would ah. make cheap commercial art to sell to be able to sustain you know your living right. i want you to be independent of your bread and butter independent from art earn your bread and butter in a decent way in service be a teacher be a physician be a lawyer but then do art for yourself you shouldn't have this feeling that, you know, oh, I have to sell it. She said she could not picture me standing on the side of the road with paintings in my hand mm -hmm. and saying, you know, mm -hmm. people are going to buy it so that I could pay. Uh, she said, because you, your father has earned livelihood in the honest way and you are going to earn your livelihood the honest way too. Um, so, you know, so I think um, d dissociate, do art for yourself. And now she tells me, she said, now you're free. Yeah. You're a physician. Do you feel that way? Yes, I think that she gave me an immense gift and understanding that, you know, I'm free to paint for myself. So I'm not concerned whether I, there's no economy involved. Right. Here. Whatever right. I make is devotional. It's original. It's joy. Yeah, it's joy. And it's for other people. And then I can take care of my, you know, basic mundane human requirements. Um, yeah. so, so you said you had this experience and you were doing well in school in Pakistan. Yes. Why are you here now? What, what was the draw to come to America and what's going on with that? Well, you know, I was fascinated with the, just the idea of a society in which, you know, there is complete um, uh, liberal attitudes towards, you know, um, how people want to live, what are people's thoughts, there's complete freedom of expression, but more so I wanted to meet people from all over the world. Where else would I have found that? I started... Is this the only place you yeah, can do well, that? Yeah, well, well, you know, I had the opportunity to go to Canada. I had the opportunity to go to England. I had the opportunity to go to other places as well. But I chose because I was fascinated with the Native American mm. wisdom, you know, a culture yep, that yep. has almost vanished. And But not only that, but, but also with this idea of, I read the Constitution and the history of the early Americans, and I liked that what they were thinking about, you know, okay, so you would not be persecuted whether what yep. beliefs you have, and you know, bring your talents and potentials. I think that this is a substrate for creating an ideal society, where people, yeah, can bring and, their... You and know. you take that ideal now, yes. and you, you are playing your part Absolutely. from one man to make that ideal society and, and create equity for all. Absolutely, and this is the key task of our g generation. If we want, I think United States can set an example for the rest of the world. Mm. I believe in the, I mean, we have so many challenges here, but I think 
you have the best one of the best i mean some of the people who are here are one of the best people in their countries you have the cream <laughs> you know we the do nations so thank you for picking america <laughs> <laughs> and you're headed now i mean as a doctor yes. not to um line pockets in a, in a lucrative practice you're heading to rural areas that's where your heart lies yes i think that you know uh, i have a lot of compassion for people mm -hmm. who are um you know under privileged and I think that there is a lot of potential uh, to make a good change in rural America. I think we can set an ideal society too. Like I was working in a rural part of Vermont which was you know with so many issues, drug and alcohol and very economically very poor areas but people loved songs of birds. They say oh I saw a chipmunk over yeah. there, oh I saw a deer over there. So and they have this ability to live simple too. You know, um, so as long as they have a decent way of making their living, I think we can set a, an example of a society in which, you know, we can have some of our emotional gratification from nature mm -hmm. and, you know, live simple and still live happy. I mean, money is not important uh, to live happy as long as you are able to live in a decent way. You know, you mm -hmm. can afford your children's, um, you know, uh, expenses and you can earn the money uh, f for that and I think that I'm very I think medicine can be a voice in society we have our hands is at the pulse of the society our patients tell us the stuff that they don't tell anybody not even some of their loved ones so I think that you know I think physicians can be a voice I am all for you know uh, encouraging small businesses in these rural areas and you know i'm making my uh, recommendations and i have planned to meet with the senator too to see that you know how can we help these uh, people you know people don't have to jump through 500 hoops to start a small yep. business you yeah. know yeah. and not only that but also introducing uh, organic growing for as a part of the treatment of alcohol and addiction because once you grow a plant uh, or a flower you know people who are so damaged here feel healing and you know that's why we can also empower them and we can bring down the prices of the organic food and uh, you know start a healthy trend healing yeah. and energy is a very common theme yes. in conversations with you and it's one that i hope we can all take with us and, and take notes from that because I, I, i've often said forget the forget the symptom go to the cause yes. or go to the root um, but you have you have relief at the very root level and what you've identified is we all have it within us and it's that same connective energy oh absolutely so yeah. thank you for painting it <laughs> thank you for bringing that oh, here because while you say that helps you i believe it helps all of us who have the opportunity to enjoy it and maybe remember to be present in the moment yeah. it's a pleasure to meet you oh, thank you thank so you much for taking the thank time. you very much for having me my pleasure okay. Want to know more about who's doing what in Berks County? Check out the stories on thepeoplechronicles.com. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Suzy Ray Design, Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.